So today's session, uh, we will look into producing videos for ODL. And the objective of this workshop uh, to explain the multimedia content production process for ODL. For instance, a video production pipeline and process. The second one is coordination work for video production. And at the same time, um, in this workshop, we will um, able to see the, the how, how, how the participant able to create and captivating video for ODL as well as introducing the tools and facilities available for producing ODL videos. So now I would like to introduce our speaker. Um, our speaker for today is uh, Mr. Alif Azra'i uh, Binjali from Faculty of Applied and Creative Arts, UNIMAS. Uh, he is a lecturer in cinematography program, UNIMAS. He holds his master in film and visual studies from Queen University of Belfast in UK. Basically, um, his expertise are in filmmaking, focus, focusing on pre-production and post-production related workflow. And he's also expert in include script writing, story and design, conceptualization, film editing and visual effects design. He is currently active in teaching and supervising students while involved with the university's effort to improve teaching and learning in higher education, such as producing massive open online courses and delving in digital game-based learning, education engagement. Apart from producing videos for educational purposes, he has also co-created film and videos for corporate ventures, documentaries, short film, music videos, and video multimedia for internal as well as external event. So without further ado, I would like to invite um, NJ Alif in uh, sharing his uh, content in producing videos for ODL. However, for the, um, I would like to attract the attention for participants. If you have any questions, okay, any query, you can just unmute your microphone and directly ask to Mr. Ali. If let's say you cannot unmute your microphone, just text, uh, just type your question in the chat room. I will uh, check and uh, directly ask uh, Mr. Ali. So I think without further ado, I over to you, uh, Mr. Ali. Okay, all right. Thank you very much. Okay, good morning. Thank you very much, Dr. Maslina and so Dr. Uh, Azra. Okay, for their help. Okay, to help me to, you know, uh, facilitate this webinar. Okay, all right. So good morning. Assalamualaikum to every participant and everyone. Okay. Um, before we start uh, our webinar, I would like to ask for permission. Okay, so I would like to be slightly more casual with my presentation because I prefer it to be slightly more casual. Okay, instead of it being too formal. Okay, and also I might switch, uh, switch to um, English and also Bahasa Melayu just to help you guys to understand. Okay, and then sometimes, um, okay, and it's some jargon or the terms, okay, there is no equivalent to, uh, there, there is no Malay language equivalent. Okay, so for example, like um, Reiki, Reiki means you scout for the location. Okay, so let's say if you want to go to your office, then you Reiki your office. Okay, so there is no Malay language equivalent to that word. Okay, um, dan banyak lagi lah. Okay, so I will let you know if there is no uh, Malay language equivalent. Okay, before that, um, I would like to do some very um, simple survey. Okay, um, all right. Um, can you log in? Okay, and then uh, to menti.com. Okay, with that uh, code up there, 17265831. Okay, so where do you put your video making level or your video making skill? Okay, is it at the beginning or the beginner? Okay, and an average or you are advanced? Okay, so you can ignore the item number four. Okay, so lupa nak buang tu. Okay. So where would you put? Okay, your video making level because um, throughout my experience um, teaching people how to do video, okay, it's very hard if I have participants who have very a huge gap between them. Okay, so we have advanced, too advanced sometimes, and then we have uh, someone who is like technophobia, they takut dengan technology. Okay, so it's very hard for me to teach everyone at the same level and also at the same pace. Okay, so I think uh, most of you. Um, would confess that you are beginner. So banyak yang tiga orang enam orang. Okay, so banyak cakap dia masih lagi beginner. Okay, so I will uh, try to cater. Okay, to the beginner level. Okay, 
Um, so if you have question, kalau ada soalan yang mungkin tak faham apa yang saya cakap, okay, sepanjang kita punya webinar, so boleh just interject dan tanya soalan. Okay, so saya takut saya terlampau jauh meninggalkan anda semua nanti. Okay, so I think uh, we can conclude that most of you are in the beginner punya level. Okay, so don't worry. Um, at the end of this course, I will list out some very plausible software. Okay, that a beginner can use. Okay, it's free. Um, it does not need high spec of your computer. Okay, and there's no watermark. Okay, the most important thing for me is that if it's free and if it's easy to use, it it needs to not have watermark. Watermark tu yang ada kat hujung tu. Okay, kadang dia akan letak new logo. Okay, ataupun logo let's say kini master lah. Okay, so dia akan letak dekat atas sini. Okay, so dia, dia akan letak logo kini master. Okay, so the worst from in my opinion would be Filmora. Filmora is like so rude. It's free. It's very nice to you actually. Okay, and then tengah-tengah uh, short edit tu, dah sampai habis tu, kita nak export, dia punya watermark logo dia besar. Satu ni, like in the middle lagi tu, okay, dia punya watermark. Okay, so I, I have compiled a selection of free uh, software you can use it either online mean, means that it is on website or on your uh, computer or also in your phone or on your phone okay and um, i think most of you will be able to understand okay how to use this software okay all right so let's go let's proceed into our slide um can you guys uh, can everyone see the slide or should i switch my notes okay my notes might be slightly long but i will try to focus on uh, things that are important for at least uh, a beginner in filmmaking or video making okay so some of you may, may have um, joined my previous webinar which is on mooc it is going to be slightly similar but we're going to replace this mooc subject okay into this odl online listen so it's definitely going to focus more on you as the um, facilitator for for your video and also your participant Okay, which is uh, which are your student? Okay, so the topic for today will be producing videos for open and distant learning or OTL. Okay, so um, I will repeat again. Okay, so the objective. So the first one is to introduce multimedia content production process for ODL. Okay, so the first one we will look into the video production pipeline and process. Okay, so for your uh, for your um, information, in uh, filmmaking um, field, okay. So we separate or we divide the video making process into three phases, okay. So the first one would be the pre production, okay. It's basically before you go on location. So that's the pre production. The second one will be production, okay. Production is whenever you arrived on location, okay. And the third one will be the post production. So once you wrap up everything and then you're going into your editing, so that is called post production, okay. Of course, in this case, uh, some of you may not have to travel far. You can just be in your office. Then whenever you arrive in your office, your office will be your location. Okay, so it'll be easier for you. So unless if some of you will prefer to go out, let's say you want to um, to make an, a more interesting video. Um, let's say if you are teaching on biology, okay, let's say on uh, fungus. So you want to go out, okay, you want to go to, into the forest and you want to find the fungus. So the forest will be your location. Okay, so B, we will cover coordination work for video production. Okay, so in certain video production, okay, there can be as less as five or even two people. Okay, so what will be talent? Talent will be the person who is talking, and the second will be the cameraman. Okay, at least two lah. Okay, so it will be hard if you only are going solo or pull on ranger and or can pegang the selfie stick or cakap. I mean, it will juga lah. Okay, uh, but it will be uh, quite hard actually. Okay, so if you only have one, unless if you prefer to be in your office, okay, and you just take a record, okay, you just push the record button on your computer, okay, and then you talk in front of the computer, okay. So most of you will prefer do it on your own, okay. But let's say if you are doing uh, your uh, your course is being taught by three people, for example, okay, so you might want to share between three people. So three of these uh, lecturer you can share between between you what you have to do, okay. So we have the um. Director, director can be the talent as well. Okay, and then we have the uh, producer. Produce, producer usually, okay, in a film setting, this is the person who's going to organize everything. Okay, so um, taking care of the equipment. Okay, and taking care means that they will they will try to provide. They they will not operate the equipment. Okay, they 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 will become this sort of like admin lah. 
okay admin okay or the manager they manage everything okay but they're not going to hands on on everything okay and then you all you would also have the editor and so on okay so what we will cover now um so what kind of work okay so each we call it crew so each crew we look into and then how many people are involved and what kind of task can they can they be assigned to okay the second one is create uh, to create and captivate video for OTL. so i would say the second one with the most important um section for this uh, webinar so we want to make a captivating you can say an interesting video okay so i myself actually i don't i i have not really produced many videos okay i produced some for um mooc i've involved with a uh, universe book before so so to become the editor um i will show a little bit of uh, tips and tricks okay on how to make your video safe that is one thing okay and how to at least make it interesting okay so uh, avoiding to make it blunt okay tak nak dia jadi macam um not to say boring tapi uh, tak nak dia macam terlampau biasa okay the third one will be i will uh, very quickly introduce to you all the tools and facilities available for producing online distant learning videos okay so this one i will focus on the easy and also the free ones okay so this will be what we're going to learn okay um so I've, I've gone through this before right so now the production so as i mentioned before um making videos is not just looking into um when you reach the location Okay, maksudnya bila awak nak fikir buat video, okay, kebanyakan um, orang yang sejumpa lah, okay, bila dia nak buat video, dia akan fikir apa dia nak buat, okay, on the spot. Meaning that they prepare everything on the day that they are going to shoot, okay. So they reach the location, then only then they would figure out what they're going to do, okay, which is actually is the wrong thing to do. What you have to do is before you have, before you go out for shooting, you have to do the pre-production, which is you have to discuss among each other okay so the script what you're going to do and then you have to break down your uh, learning units okay because let's say if you have 13 learning units are you going to include all 13 into one video okay so which is a mistake for, for me lah. okay so you have to at least make make one learning unit one video okay so we look into the problem that you might anticipate okay while you are shooting so the first one would be um um when you are first timer okay so you've never really done video recording before i mean this is very common okay happened to a lot of um lecturers okay that i've involved with previously okay uh you might be uh practicing your script okay beforehand awak dah awak dah i mean um anda semua dah practice dah hafal semua ni okay tapi bila sampai location semua hilang Okay, so everything gone. Okay, so that's why it is also very important to do dry run. Okay, dry run means that try to record. Okay, you, you can do it with your friend or you can do it by yourself. Because sometimes when you see that red light, okay, on your computer or on your uh, phone, you will try, you will you will think too much. Okay, you will think too much. Um, you will think about um, uh, what line you have to say next. Okay, so this is going to mess up your, your focus. Okay, so it will be good to uh, practice and then to record your practice okay not, not just practice in, um, in front of the mirror but you have to record and then you have to watch yourself in the recording okay sometimes um it is uh, sometimes some people they are not comfortable with themselves okay but um that's how you learn from not the same mistake but that's how you learn to change something that you may not like maybe your tone okay because when you hear yourself talking is going to be different than what other perceives okay or what the camera is showing okay so that's why it's very important for you to do some practice on recorded video okay next will be expectation what will happen okay um some things when you go outside sometimes some things um something are out, out out of your power okay just like now actually a few minutes ago there were actually some construction uh, construction work going on Okay, next to my building. Okay, so alhamdulillah dah habis lah. So tak, tak dengar bunyi tu. Tapi saya pernah uh, terlibat dengan MOOC yang the first MOOC. Uh, the FIT punya MOOC. Uh, nak shooting kat luar. Okay, time tu cun-cun uh, construction work dia tengah buat the cube. 
Tentu Cube belum siap So you can imagine the whole week, two weeks tu Bunyi um, apa nama ni, bunyi mesin tu dia sedang mengut tanah Okay, and on top of that Zaman tu adalah zaman, uh, musim tu adalah musim jerbu Okay, so you will see this haze going on behind us Okay, but uh, with post production you can actually fix At least fix a, a tiny bit lah The sound you can edit out uh, Although if you hear, listen carefully You will still hear the sound, the cranking sound And also the haze, uh, the fog lah, the punya jerbu tu um, you, you can change the color, okay But if you really look carefully at the video You can see that it is um, fog or it is haze Okay, and then um, next would be um, your experience in producing video. So since most of you are beginners, I think most of you may not have much experience or you have this basic experience. Tapi tak apa. Okay, so experience is important uh, for you to get used to yourself. Okay, jangan risau. Kadang the first video tak semestinya terus perfect 100%. Okay, so semakin kita biasa buat semakin itu, or punya, I mean video kita akan semakin uh, berkembang. Okay, dah improve dalam lama dia akan jadi elok. So akan ikut up. Uh, Bagaimana awak expect video awak untuk um, dia punya rupa tu lah Okay Alright, so this will be the pre-production, production and post-production Okay, so pre-production is everything that you do before you go on location Okay, for example, scripting, budgeting, planning and scheduling So, bila awak nak shoot, okay, I mean bila anda semua nak shoot um, Adakah dia akan duit ke tak, dekat mana dan sebagainya Production inilah semasa awak sampai ke lokasi Even kalau awak dekat, I mean kalau anda semua dekat pejabat Okay Kita lihat siapa directing dia Okay, so in terms of filming Okay, dekat mana? So, apa angle dia? Okay, kalau dekat office, office siapa? Okay, maybe nak buat dekat lobby dulu Okay, and the cinematography would be um, angle Okay, yang nak digunakan Okay, it can be high angle, low angle or it can be high level Okay, next would be we look into the um, The lights, okay, the camera itself, dia punya ratio Okay, juga um, Giving action to your talent. Okay, next will be post production. This one right after you wrap up. Okay, so editing, music score, color correction, product delivery, and so on. Okay, so itu antara beberapa um, chat amik apa ni? Sorry, workflow. Okay, workflow untuk setiap group. Okay, alright. So I'm going to skip this one. This is um. So before you proceed your shooting okay so it's very important for you to check the weather okay so now i think it is i think i think the weather now is slightly confused it's supposed to be dark season ataupun musim kemarau atau musim panas dekat sini dekat um kujing samarhan last year bulan august september panas kan okay but now i mean this year it seems like the weather's kind of confused so kita hujan um hampir tiap-tiap hari dah okay since last month since uh, the beginning of August okay so it will be great let's say if you want to shoot outside it will be great if you can um, look at the weather forecast okay lihat apakah ramalan cuaca okay for example kalau nak shoot sekarang okay ini hari ni kan oh sorry um, untuk hari ini daripada pukul 8 sampai um, hari um, Rabu minggu depan dia akan hujan lebat dengan kilat lagi Okay, so kemungkinan besar kalau let's say lah, kalau kita dalam situasi ini, okay, if we have external um, location, kalau kita lokasi di luar, kemungkinan besar kita, kita kena tukar plan, kita kena shoot dalam, okay, ataupun kita kena postpone. But to be honest, postponing a whole schedule is not a very good idea. Okay, sebab susah ni untuk lecturer, untuk kita semua cari masa yang, masa semua free kan. Okay, so saya rasa jangan tukar masa, schedule yang tukar, Tukar lokasi saja, Okay It's okay Walaupun awak plan nak pergi luar kan Okay Awak rasa dekat Unimas ni Dekat luar cantik lagi Ada taman dia It's okay Most of the time We can Make do of The the internal location In your office Okay So we can decorate at least Okay At least it is going to be In your power Okay uh, It will be bad if let's say uh, You force your team To go out and shoot Even though you know That it's going to rain Okay And then what outside Suddenly it rains, okay, and it rains heavily, okay, lagi usah, so semua hilang mood, okay, semua kena lari, basah-basah kuyup semua, okay, so itu akan affect um, moral semua orang, okay, so better untuk tukar lokasi, okay, alright, so things to consider, okay, so will be the, uh, of course time lah, okay, so are you going to shoot day or night, so I, I assume everyone's going to, uh, going to shoot during the day, 
okay because at least you have natural light okay from the window like i do have now so this is all lights from the window plus uh, lights from the ceiling okay and then traveling time to your location so is it going to be long okay so if it's going to be long if it's, if if it is going to be far let's say you are planning to travel to bau let's say okay macam yang video muk uh, bahasa iban pernah buat dia travel pergi bau okay so itu perlu planning planning masa yang lagi rumit so kena travel awal okay dekat sampai sana sebab bila sampai sana i mean bila kita sampai di lokasi okay, kita kena set up pula lokasi okay set up lokasi kena ambil masa sejam okay so really have to up schedule your timing accordingly okay and then equipment set up as well you really have to pay attention especially if you have uh, advanced equipment for example you have the DSLR okay plus with the uh, microphone or it, or it can be wireless microphone okay and then you have lighting as well okay and so many other uh, let's say so many other equipment okay so this one you really need time okay so in my um experience let's say on a film film set if it's really like a genuine genuine film set is going to is going to take more than two hours okay but uh when my time uni was uh, preparing for mooc video it will take one hour most of the time lah, one hour okay but if it's really simple i think even half an hour you can do it let's say you're only going to you're, you're planning to just to, to just use your phone your phone and then you're shooting outside okay so you do have to uh, you, you don't have to bother about your lighting okay so that's going to take you less than 30 minutes okay next will be your talent okay um, their wardrobe okay their makeup okay so i think most of us we don't to, okay like myself whenever i do my um mooc video or just activity video okay for my class i prefer just go all natural okay because if you if you want to make up then that's going to add another set of time okay unless if you really want to to be present uh, to be to be more presentful okay in your video then you have to uh, allocate more time for makeup okay a uh, wardrobe also very important i will cover wardrobe after this okay so i'm going to skip this okay because i think um i've uh, i've covered this very quick the look um the first thing you have to secure location if let's say in your office then it's already secure let's say if you're going outside okay if you're planning to shoot inside a restaurant okay uh, based on my experience if you're shooting inside a restaurant let's say secret recipe you have to let them know in advance okay some of them they might let you just they might let you, they might let you pass meaning that they will let you just shoot okay but if let's say people comes in okay and makes um noises you cannot uh, you cannot um, ask them to quiet down okay because you are basically borrowing but let's say if you need a special place you need a uh, peace and quiet for your shooting then you have to let the management know okay scout for picture ready location means that picture ready means the next day is not going to change okay let's say if you're going uh, to shoot for uh, let's say um you want um a house let's say you you are teaching culture for example okay so you want to shoot a long house okay then you know that in culture village there's there's already a huge long house there okay dah uh, dah fix okay tak perlu kita nak uh, bina ataupun tak perlu kita nak risk let's say kalau kita pergi tempat lain okay ada potensi tempat itu tutup okay then it is definitely not picture ready picture ready means the next day you're planning to go is still going to be there okay um rain hujan lah hujan adalah bahaya let's say awak ada topik pasal biodiversity okay dan awak nak shoot hujan awak tahu berdasarkan kita punya uh, schedule okay hujan tiap-tiap hari okay then you are confident that tomorrow is going to rain okay but then rain is very unpredictable then rain here it is not picture ready okay because rain can go away any time so it's very um, risky okay so for lighting lighting is very important okay sangat penting di sini sebab kalau lighting awak tak bagus okay so let's say lighting you don't have light lighting much you only depend on your ceiling lighting for example okay so you don't have window you don't have extra lighting you don't have the field light um your video or your camera sometimes they need light 
Okay, and if there's not enough light, the shutter will open. Dia pun shutter tu, dia akan buka. Okay, dan dia akan menyebabkan kita punya video itu di grain. Dia di bitik-bitik-bitik. Dia macam pasir. Okay, so when that happens to your video, then it is no longer high quality. Okay, so it is very important to have as much lighting as you can. Okay. Lighting ini pun boleh beli actually. Okay, so I have um, some extra lighting equipment. Okay, in my office even. Okay, and the noise. Okay, so right now, if you listen carefully, if you're using um, headphone, you might be able to listen to um, the aircon. Okay, dia punya ni lah, um, exhaust dalam, dalam semua office. Okay, so noise is also very important for you to take note. Okay, because if you're in a room, okay, with the air conditioning on, you have to turn it off. Okay, sometimes inilah benda yang buat open talent merana. So, that's why kita kena sedia dengan um, air, kena sedia dengan tisu. Okay, sebab kadang-kadang, um, even bunyi yang kita tak dengar, okay, bila kita post production, bunyi tu sangat kuat, especially bunyi aircon. Okay, uh, the most common problem, I would say, in terms of noise, is your aircon punya bunyi. Okay, ataupun bunyi kipas. Okay, so you have to make sure there's not much noise. And then passer by pun sama juga. But I think since most of us, uh, we're not going to go outside since it is the pandemic. Um, even if you go outside, it will be less people walking around. So you but you will not have many passer by, you know, like walking behind you. Okay. And then this passer by, it is very important for us to make sure there's no passer by because um, this passer by, let's say lah one day, okay, if they saw their face in your video, um, they have the right to ask you to take it down. Okay, so mereka boleh minta awak untuk turunkan. So, percuma lah. Okay, paling-paling pun awak kena re-upload. Okay, ataupun awak kena edit balik muka dia, awak kena blur kan. And then re-upload. Tapi bila blur muka, uh, muka your pass by, then open your video dia nampak. Dia sedikit sesat. Okay, so kena baca hati. Okay, so that's why, kalau let's say if I'm, um, for example, in my documentary production, <coughs> we do we, we do this technique called box pop. Box pop adalah awak menerjah orang. Dia macam melodi lah. Awak terjah orang. Okay, bila awak terjah, uh, usually crew kita dah ada sedia uh, release form. Release form maksudnya awak minta design, dia setuju untuk appear ataupun tidak. Kalau tak, then awak kena cari orang lain. Okay, awak kena buang the footage. Okay, so kita mesti cari orang lain. Yang setuju untuk sign barang itu supaya muka mereka ada. Tapi dekat Malaysia jarang berlaku lah. Okay, uh, jarang berlaku di mana um, ada Pasal by, dia paksa uh, lecturer ataupun siapa-siapa lah untuk turunkan video. Kecuali kalau di influencer lah. Kalau di influencer yang sangat famous, dan kemungkinan besar, dia punya pasal by itu ataupun orang belakang dia akan paksa lah untuk uh, turunkan video itu. Okay, ataupun ada uh, influencer kena bayar. Okay, so in this case, we don't want to risk it. So, better elakkan pasal by. Okay, so dalam minimal lagi senang lah. Ataupun dalam opening office. So, for sure, tak ada banyak um, tak ada banyak orang kena lalu lalang. Okay, so untuk tools, um, the most important will be your script. Okay, so you have to make sure that you have prepared your script beforehand. Okay, at least the day before your shooting. Okay, uh, you really have to be um, detailed in your script. Okay, meaning that when you are on location, okay, when you are shooting, you, you have to follow 100% the same. Okay, kita kena mesti ikut skrip itu 100% sama. Kalau boleh lah. Okay, tapi kalau let's say ada pertambahan, tak kisah. Okay, tapi cuma uh, kalau kalau kita ada editor lain, okay, kita akan menyeksa editor itu. Okay, sebab uh, bila tak ikut skrip, kita akan tambah-tambah um, the, uh, the dialogue. Kadang bunyi. Uh, that's why bila kita, uh, bila kita bercakap, bila kita, bila kita cuba untuk menambah apa nama ni, menambah skrip, okay, kita, sometimes beberapa orang dari kita, kita akan mula berfikir macam uh, ataupun apa tu, apa tu, ataupun hmm, okay. Benda ini akan membuatkan video kita nampak tidak menarik, okay, ataupun nampak kurang profesional, okay, dan untuk kita minta editor untuk buang, okay, so akan menyusahkan kerja editor. Okay, so cuba untuk ikut skrip, satu patut kalau boleh. Okay, next equipment, so this is up to up to everyone lah, what you want to prepare, okay. But the okay. most basic will be just your phone, okay. Preferably, um, your, your phone should be able to cater to high definition punya uh, video. Yeah, so, 
Uh, excuse me Mr. Alif, yes. saya rasa hmm. ada Dr. Mahani nak tanya soalan ke? Oh yes, yes, apa dia? Ah, okay. eh, kalau untuk ODL ni kita perlu sediakan skrip juga ke untuk untuk kelas? Um, uh, to be honest, uh, skrip itu boleh jadi the slide. The slide. Um, I will share later after on. I I have this sample script. Uh, sometimes the script does not have to be very professional. Maksudnya tak pula nak nak download final draft ataupun uh, ataupun um, this uh, self text. Okay, you don't have to use professional software. Okay, this script can be your guideline as well. Okay, so when I say script, the bukanya script yang are not like this. Okay, if you can, it will be it will be good actually. Okay, but if let's say you want a very simple video, okay, you don't have to do exactly like this. It be um, cuts. It can be uh, what do you call that um, mind map. Okay. In way to not mess up your shooting. Okay, let's say if you want a very smooth shooting session. Okay, so at least you have your script prepared. Okay, again, they tak semestinya macam ini. Okay, they boleh jadi just cut ataupun mind map. Okay, anything that will keep you um in focus. Okay, of what you are trying to uh, say. Okay, ataupun what you are trying to give lecture about. Boleh ya? Huh? Sebab memang pernah berlaku saya ikut uh, ada shooting dia langsung tak prepare. Okay, bila dia tak prepare, uh, bila dia buat uh, let's say first take. Okay, first first take, dia punya text lain. Okay, and dia kena cut lah. Okay, which is bila kena cut, dia kena either sambung daripada awal ataupun dia boleh sambung, sorry, dia kena restart daripada awal ataupun sambung daripada part yang disilap itu. Okay, tapi let's say kalau dia buat ataupun dia tambah banyak perkataan yang tak sama dengan skrip, okay, dia akan menyebabkan video itu jadi tidak begitu selari. Okay, ataupun akan berlaku pengulangan daripada fakta yang akan diucapkan. Okay, again, benda ini akan menyusahkan kerja editor. Okay, so kita, I mean, kalau kalau kita edit apa lah, kita akan kita apa, apa kita buat. Okay, tapi kalau boleh, um, in my in my experience, uh, better elakkan benda yang menambahkan kerja kita. Okay. So a script just as a guide would be enough lah. So script sebagai satu panduan saja, okay, itu pun cukup. Okay. Bahaya kalau langsung tak prepare, let's say kita just prepare dalam dalam kita punya ingatan on location, terus shoot dan kita hanya bergantung kepada kita punya ingatan saja. So bahaya. Unless kalau um, anda semua dah, dah biasa. Okay, then it will be okay lah. I mean, no problem with that. But let's say if you're not used to it, okay, belum lagi biasa, better sediakan script sebagai panduan. Okay, I mean, that's my opinion lah. Okay, so I hope um, I answer your question, Dr. Mahani. Boleh? Ya, yeah, ya, yeah, boleh. Terima kasih. Okay, thank you. Okay, so next makeup, makeup again is up to you whether you want to do makeup or not. Okay, next will be wardrobe ataupun baju lah your attire. So please avoid um, branded and also sexy attire. So I think this one most lecturers that we have, I think everyone um, are so humble. Okay, so most video that I've seen before. Okay, so keep to uh, this um, conventional and also conservative attire. Okay, cuma yang brand. Okay, so this brand is very dangerous. Okay, especially yang tudung tu kan. Tudung tu dia uh, ada tudung mahal. Okay, yang ada jenama dark tu, for example. Okay, so if you have that brand dark, okay, um, if the the owner finds out, okay, the, I mean in your video, the the brand logo is visible, she or he has the right to ask you to take the the video down. Okay, sebab so dikiranya tak nak jadi macam sponsor lah. Usually in the in a video, whenever you you show a brand, okay, it shows that the brand is sponsoring you. Okay. So if your video is like very, if the video is very well executed, well executed, and the owner, the owner of the brand, let's say if you're using the to don't duck the hand, kalau dia suka, dia tak kisah. Okay, tapi let's say kalau video itu mungkin tidak tidak mencapai dia punya um, expectation, 
And bagi dia, walaupun awak accident, awak tak sengaja letak dia punya logo, okay. Dan bagi dia, benda itu memalukan dia punya logo, okay. Dia punya brand dan dia ada hak untuk awak turunkan um, dia, awak punya video lah, okay. Ataupun kena blur the logo, okay. So, try to avoid brand, uh, branded, uh, ataupun baju, ataupun tudung, ataupun apa pakaian yang menampakkan jenama, okay. So this is sample script. So this one was for my um, MOOC previously. Okay. Um, yang ini dia punya action lah. So title of the course. Okay. So what is going to happen in the video? Okay. So for example, uh, because I was shooting in a team of three. Okay. So I need everyone. Okay. Ataupun because we, we are splitting the learning unit. Okay. So uh, one person will be doing three. Okay. But each one of us has to, each one of us has to understand the look of the video or what is going on in that video okay for example for my uh, for my session i want it to be the title first title of the course which in order to keep in black okay over white background this is what i wanted okay later when i pass to my editor my editor will know exactly what this means it means that there's going to be a title ataupun text intro to cinema okay in black one hitam okay then the over white Background. Maksudnya, dia punya terbelakang adalah warna putih. Okay, so a hint appear from the right side, holding film making item, cover board, uh, or megaphone, and then the title dissolves. Okay, so this is obviously for the trailer lah. Okay, but let's say if you are doing for your learning unit, it can be even more simpler than this. Okay, but let's say if you want a specific text or a specific picture lah, okay, to come out, you have to mention in your uh, script. Of course, the end product, okay, the video ahead to, okay, most of the time it will not follow 100% what your script wanted. Okay, most of the time uh, your script will change or your video will be finished, okay, without following the script 100%. Okay, selalu berlaku. Okay, so jangan risau. Again, the script is only for your uh, guide only. Okay, especially when you are in a big group, at least everyone know what is uh, what is happening in your video. Okay, so this is some um, reminder. Okay, so untuk attire ataupun untuk pakaian semasa muncul dalam video. Um, so I am I I'm assuming that your video is going to be uploaded on YouTube and then connected to your uh, Elite. Okay, so um, although most of this video it is not regulated by unit by um, Calm ataupun by Unimas. Okay, but I think it's better for us to be on the safe side. Let's say if your if your video turns out to be good, it can be nominated for some award lah. Okay, for example, and then turns out um, you are wearing, you are not wearing the right clothing. Okay, or the brand is showing. Okay, then you have to change your video. You have to blur or you have to re-upload. Worse will be you have to reshoot, which is something that we don't want to do. Okay, so this will be the safe uh, attire that you can wear. So untuk perempuan, as usual lah, baju kurung ataupun um, baju-baju tradisional. Okay, boleh. Tak kisah. And then untuk uh, warna. Okay, kalau boleh warna dia jangan offensive. Okay, offensive maksudnya bila dia masuk dalam kamera. Okay, let's say ada warna hijau. This, this one particular green color. Green and also pink. Dia kena dia terlampau terang. Okay, some people they cannot they cannot look at colors that are too bright. Dia kadang dia ada apa nama ni epi epilepsi tu kan. Okay, so tu bahaya. So wear um, slightly safer color macam grey. Grey, black will be the safest color. Okay, so warna-warna yang gelap lah macam ni. So this grey, uh, grey, uh, dark, light grey punya color. Okay, make sure the clothing are slightly loose. Okay, not too tight. Jangan terlampau ketat. Okay, so for men, okay, yang tadi untuk yang wanita, okay, dan yang lelaki, uh, wear smart casual or office wear. Okay, uh, avoid wearing um, something that is too casual. Okay, for example, you're only wearing this round neck. Okay, round neck, lepas tu ada perkataan. Okay, so I, I think that would be, um, you, you're going to distract the attention of your, uh, of your students. Okay, although this sounds trivial, bunyi dia macam agak lecehan. Kita fikir, Kalau kita nak video Jepun, okay, sepatutnya pakai round neck pun dah boleh kan. Tapi sebenarnya, okay, based on my, again, based on my experience, uh, if you don't, uh, if you don't set yourself this rule, and then you wear um, anything that you want, okay, so one day, 
you will wear something that is offensive to other people. Muka ada orang lain akan terasa. Okey terjadi uh, dengan baru-baru inilah um, yang dekat fakulti seni ada buat um, apa nama ni um, conference. Okey so kita buat online video. Okey. And uh, malangnya lupa untuk uh, guideline dah ada guideline untuk pakaian tapi lupa untuk ni lupa untuk um, bagi strict. Okay, so ada student dia pakai round neck and then dia punya t-shirt tu warna warna warni dia punya this apa nama lengan dia warna kuning. Lepas tu dia punya uh, baju dia warna hitam. Lepas tu ada perkataan, lepas tu ada logo lagi. Okay, so it is it actually does not look good for a professional or for academic setting. Okay, so that's why uh, be as simple one and then um, make it as plain as possible. Okay, so tak pun nampak logo macam ni lah. So like we see in this photo. Okay, not showing any brand logos or inappropriate symbols. Okay. Okay, alright. Um, the thing that we, I mean, this is really uh, strictly banned, I would say, for academic punya video. Okay, so clothing, there are two types. I'm sure most of us here um, know, okay, we, we can think by ourselves that if we know that it's, if it's too tight or too revealing, that we're not going to wear it, okay? Uh, but we need to double check on that because previously uh, with my experience doing the MOOC video, there's one time we have um, the speaker, the punya host lah, okay, the speaker wearing just a, a normal blouse. Dia uh, perempuan lah, dia punya speaker wanita, okay? Dia pakai round neck, okay? Blouse yang ada tu lah, round neck and then dia ada ropol-ropol and then short sleeve proper pose juga. Okay, and then everything was done. Okay, so we wrap up, we wrap up the shooting and we also uh, done the post production, the habis edit. Okay, so we just want to submit the video to come. Okay, but yes, to go through pitching first. Okay, so we pitch to, dulu tadi ni global, I think it was uh, macam UKK, something like that lah. Okay, but it has to do with the protocol. Okay. And the video was rejected. Okay, because the host was somehow wearing clothing they are too revealing. Okay, so for us, it is not revealing because she's just wearing um, short sleeve. Okay, meaning that short sleeve for women, um, it is risky. Kalau boleh, biar dia lepas siku lah, kalau boleh. Okay, so what happened? We have to reshoot the video all over again. Okay, dengan musim jerbu tu. Okay, so that's why it's very um, risky. If you don't give attention, to this kind of um, component, okay. Walaupun kita hanya produce video untuk kita punya elite video, okay. But um, kalau boleh jangan alang-alang lah, okay. So biar semua itu dihasilkan dengan teliti. Because kita tahu video itu mungkin boleh di, boleh di, um, boleh dicalonkan untuk beberapa anugerah. We don't know, okay. Because I think, I think come can um, talk about this later. So if let's say your video is very good, then it can be nominated for some external or internal award. Okay. So flip untuk uh, lelaki, flip off tak boleh. And then jeans pun tak dikalakkan juga. Okay. So revealing attire for both men and women. Okay. So not allowed. Okay. Okay. So very quickly here, uh, if you're using your phone, make sure that you are recording landscape. Landscape like this. Okay. So dia men mencang-cang macam ini. Okay, okay. So ini adalah vertical menegak. So don't do this. Okay, when you're recording a video, okay, jangan record video macam ini. Okay, unless unless if you're shooting a short clip for your TikTok, itu boleh. Because TikTok, you cannot fix the uh, the rotation. Okay, so untuk video, okay, so it is preferably if you shoot your video um, like this, um, horizontal, ataupun landscape. Okay. And then a uh, mic, I would say it should be no problem unless you are using um, wireless microphone. Wireless microphone, you have to hide the microphone somewhere inside your shirt lah. Okay, tapi kalau awak pakai phone daripada phone, should be should be nothing much that we can uh, talk about. Okay, because most phone nowadays, uh, it comes with a very good built-in microphone. Okay, dah, dah terlampau, dah bagus, so tak payah pakai this external audio lagi. Okay, unless kalau awak nak certain bunyi, I mean, unless you are teaching sound, for example, you want to teach the sound of cricket, then you need the microphone to listen to the sound of cricket. And then camera stabilizer, 
um, you can buy the clamp. Okay, so untuk kekalkan, so to make the camera stable. Because if you're holding with your hand, okay, some people, they cannot hold the camera um, properly. Okay, kadang dia punya tangan akan bergal. So bergal nanti akan nampak dalam kita punya video. Okay, walaupun semasa itu tak nampak, tapi the end product akan nampak video itu, dia akan bergal. Okay, so beli tripod ataupun beli the uh, phone clamp tu. Okay, and then quality, preferably we want your video to be in high definition. At least lah, paling-paling rendah pun. Okay, if you shoot in 4K or 4K or 8K, with certain phone, they can cater to 4K punya quality. I think um, it is too much because when you shoot in 4K, then the size is going to be too big. Okay, dia tambah besar and then when you are using a simple software, you are going to crash the software. I would say 7 to OP, okay, or 108 OP should be enough okay just nice for your students to look to look at high quality video okay so 7 to op ataupun 1080p okay so i think i cover this now uh, tadi okay so the, the example of the video i've done before unfortunately i don't have the the finished product okay i cannot i cannot find it okay but i i was able to find the uh the raw clip okay so i did this just under 10 minutes okay so this would be the kind of video that i usually will produce okay um i would do i mean I'm, sometimes i would do over green screen okay so to make it more interesting so that can jadi dia tabak ini so the the background actually this um apa nama this light flare ni okay is actually moving okay so we actually have moving background okay it moves slowly lah this light flare Okay, and then we have text here. I was talking about free book and there's also a picture here. So these are some kind of, I would say, uh, video that is captivating to students. Okay, so later I will share some statistic, okay, that I ask my student to answer. Okay, so what kind of video do they find captivating? All right, so next topic or, or next section will be what makes a video captivating? So apakah yang akan memberikan um, dari tarikan kepada sesebuah video. Okay. Alright, so uh, which, I mean, I ask them, let's say if most of us prefer to do uh, your lecture over our slide, over the PowerPoint, okay, so ask the student which PowerPoint visual appeals to you. Okay, so bentuk PowerPoint manakah yang menarik bagi mereka. So, dia punya slash adalah, is it put on text, hanya text saja, okay, Ataupun PowerPoint slide yang teks dia ada bantuan visual. Okay, so text with visual aids. Okay, next would be no preference. Don't, they don't mind. Okay, so with text or with picture, they just want to learn, for example. Okay, so the majority, 80%. Okay, students uh, prefer text with visual. Okay, so something like this lah. So for your PowerPoint, okay, so it's better to provide some uh, visual aid. If it's relevant, okay, kalau relevant lah, kalau let's say if you're only teaching theory, okay, um, and then there's no relevant image that you can provide, okay, then you don't have to put image. But I think even if you talk about theory, let's say you want to talk about theory by some famous author, you can provide at least picture of that author. At least they know who this person is, okay. Next would be... Okay, um, question three. Do you like casual, okay, with bits of jokes and spontaneity, or do you like serious, straight to the point kind of video? Okay, so again, majority of them, 90%, okay, prefer casual. Okay, so they don't really, I mean, no one picked serious. Okay, so they would prefer casual means that the video is a uh, fun, okay, or interesting. So not just put on text or the like. The lecturer just speak in monotonous tone. Okay, so this is something that um, everyone might want to consider. So how to make your video interesting? Okay, the next would be uh, usually when I do my um, slide in, in class, I usually I will put some um, not jokes but some back backhand joke, a small joke. For example, here I put another bona fide students respond. Okay, so I use this sort of like kind of um something for them to read and perhaps they can laugh about okay in, in later slides 
Okay. The next question will be, do you prefer the lecturer to be visible in the video or not? Okay. Adakah mereka uh, nak lecturer untuk muncul dalam video ataupun tidak? Okay. So, a majority, okay. So, interestingly, I, I actually didn't expect this. Interestingly, majority of them, they don't mind. So, either you appear in the video or not. Okay. So, 55% say that they don't mind. Okay, they have no preference. Okay, but 42.5% say they prefer the lecturer to appear. My theory will be that um, I think they've seen certain ODL video or online video from the lecturer. And perhaps, I mean, maybe not in any mass, maybe outside. They see that the lecturer was not really, um, not really doing much in front of the camera. Okay, just reading or just staying static in front of the camera. So I think that's why they don't mind if the lecturer will be will not be in the video or not okay so if you want to be in the video okay so you might want to move a little bit okay jangan hanya duduk tegak sajalah ataupun just baca di mic slide so you might want to move around okay not move too much okay perhaps you might want to have something let's say you have you might want to have props for example okay so or kokan props you show in front of the camera okay so at least master project tu dia akan tengok awak i mean tengok kita dan juga tengok oh, kita punya props Okay, so but then um, based on this survey, okay, so lecturer have the actual the lecturer actually have the option, okay, to not appear in the video, okay. So you can if you want to, but if you don't want to, you can just uh, depend on your voice over. Boleh bergantung kepada suara saja. Okay, alright. So any um, any questions so far? By the way, this is from my art student. Okay, so I I just assume that um, regardless of their field, I think they would have the same preference. Okay, maybe art or science student. Okay, I'm sure they would have the same preference over the the video. Okay, so this is an example. Okay, of um, how you can make over your slide. Okay, so these two slides. Okay, they are actually similar in terms of their content. Okay, they punya sekundangan sama. Okay, but on the right side, okay, it is being simplified one thing. Okay, and it is provided by visual aids. Okay, we're talking about film. Okay, talking about, for example, uh, Raja Bersi was the, was the title of the film. So we show the poster. Okay. And then, of course, on the left side, when we read, okay, the left side, it is more um, in detail. Dia lagi banyak uh, butiran, okay, yang tak ada dalam slide um, uh, yang di sebelah kanan, okay. Tapi, this extra slide, for example, um, this one, the film was a commercial failure, okay. On this slide, it is not mentioned here, okay. So, this, this is where you actually mention this, okay, yourself. Okay, you don't have to put this in the slide. Okay, but you can explain to your student. Okay, because um, there's one most uh, one one more um, survey. I did the question. Okay, I cannot unfortunately I cannot put it into a very simplified uh, graphic. Okay, uh, asking the student in one word how do they describe an interesting or captivating video? They say. A lot of them, they said they want interesting, they want fun, they want visual. Okay, so I think most of these students, they, they want uh, they want simple, they want fun, interesting, and they want the slide to be included with visual, for example, pictures or graph and so on. Okay, so I think this is one of the way that we can cater to what the student find interesting. Okay, if let's say you want to explain, let's say you have explanation over here, like this one, uh, the video was commercial failure, then you can actually just uh, explain it without using the points here. Okay, so I think semua pensyarah pun mentor kot dari ini, di mana kita menjelaskan gambar. For example, sejarah Raja Bersiung. Okay, saya sebagai pensyarah, saya boleh bagi tahu saja. Okay, dengan teruslah kepada pelajar sejarah Raja Bersiung. Tak perlu untuk saya letak di bahagian saya punya point ini. Okay. Alright. Okay, so now, okay, so since we are trying to, I mean, I'm, I'm trying to, I'm, I'm asked to uh, share how to make an interesting or captivating video, I'm going to borrow some of my art um, notes here, okay. So this is from a very popular, I mean, this is collection, okay, from some very 
very popular designers, okay, for posters and also for um, um, graphic designs, okay. So for a good design, okay, so we have nine rules, okay, but I'm going to focus on just like a few, okay. So for example, rule two, four, six, I'm going to exclude because uh, this one is not relevant to producing video. The rest can be applied in the video making, okay, because the, the goal is the same. We want to produce an interesting or captivating video. Okay, so rule number one, we need to have a concept. Okay, uh, this concept can refer to color, okay, can refer to the shape of your uh, video. Okay, let's say if you want to, um, to incorporate animation, then that can be your concept. Okay, so every one of your learning unit, okay, it can be incorporated with Powtoon, for example. Semua ada pakai okay, Powtoon sebab awak nak itu kursus awak. Awak nak cater kepada maybe pelajar first year. Okay, so since they are slightly um, new, they might be, I mean, they might be a bit childish. So you want to make it more animatic. So you can use Powtoon. Okay, and then uh, for third year, you want it to be more, um, not just serious, but more um, simple. Okay, but simple, but straight to the point. I mean, simple, straight to the point, uh, but elegant. Okay, so you can refer to, I mean, you, you can look into this hybrid macam Gucci and they punya, they punya take to sangat elegant. They kurus, okay, and then straight to the point, they sikit-sikit saja. And sangat simple means that karena gambar tak ada. Okay, just uh, beberapa patah perkataan saja. Okay, so that can also be your concept. Okay, again, like I said just now, color can all, usually color lah. Okay, uh, is the uh, predetermined factor. Okay, for your concept, you want to use white as your uh, predominant color. You can use white as your predominant color. So like my slide now, uh, it is white with pastel color. Pastel one of them lah. Okay, so this like slightly uh, faded colors. Okay, usually pastel we have green. Uh, yellow, brown, and so on. So all of my uh, slide theme follow this pastel punya color. Uh, that is um, the first one that you have to do is you need to have a concept. Okay, concept is basically the look that you want to give out in your video. Okay, next will be rule number three: use two typeface families only. Okay, gunakan dua saja font. Okay, jangan pakai lebih. Ini saya akan tunjukkan contoh apa berlaku kalau kita pakai lebih. Okay, rule number five, pick colors on purpose. Okay, so bila kita menggunakan warna, okay, kita kena tahu kenapa warna itu digunakan. Okay, for example, let's say in biology. Okay, uh, perhaps we're teaching um, flora. Okay, so flora usually is is uh, is associated with the green color. Okay, warna tumbuhan kan? So kita pakai warna hijau. Okay, so the reason why you want to use the green color is because green is always associated with this flora color. Okay, so at least adalah sebab kenapa kita pakai warna hijau. So it would be weird if let's say um, you're talking about you're talking about um, flora, okay, or, or the topics biology, um, the flora kingdom, okay, and then the colors will be in pink. Okay, I think that would be slightly weird. Ini macam tak tak masuk dia punya tema warna dia. Okay, so you have to be very careful on color that you choose. My rule of thumb is be as simple as you can okay black gray white is the most simple color so if you don't know which color to use use these three colors it's the safest color that you can use okay um next one rule number seven is the negative space is magical negative space is actually refers to this empty space over here ruang kosong sini ini adalah negative space okay so di mana ruang ada text ini Okay, ini dikira sebagai active space. Sebenarnya negative space dia lagi penting daripada active space. Okay, especially dalam poster. Okay, dalam poster, okay, negative space akan membantu awak punya, I mean kita punya audience untuk fokus kepada active space. Kalau poster tak ada negative space, dia banyaklah. So, kiranya slide ini penuh dengan teks, then kita punya audience tak tahu di mana untuk membaca. Okay, so, uh, It's very important for us to consider what is the most important component of your slide. Okay, I'll, I'll put in one frame where your students should focus on. Okay, then we have to make sure that that active space is filled with this proper negative space. Okay. Next will be rule number eight: move it. 
Okay, so static design is dull. Okay, so in your video, I know that uh, if we're talking, okay, let's say if we, if we are um, presenting, okay, using PowerPoint, so it's very hard for us to move. Okay, sometimes we don't have to move. Okay, I mean, we don't have to every time move in our video. Okay, you can have your text moving. Okay, so dear fade in, fade out. Okay, it can be there slowly um, uh, comes in into the slide or the database that can slowly keluar. Okay, but that is very dangerous. Okay, make sure everything is not too slow. Okay, sometimes this this PowerPoint punya animation dia sangat slow kan? so it's going to torture your audience. Okay, so make sure that everything happen um, as quick as it should. So secepat so yang diperlukan. Okay, yang penting kena bergerak. That's why untuk setiap slide, okay, so elakkan untuk penuhkan uh, kita punya slide dengan nota. Okay, for example this one, I will say this is full with uh, text. Okay, let's say when this slide comes in, okay, this one is now, okay, um, semua keluar serentak. So from the beginning until the end. Okay, so it appear all together at the same time. Okay, so some student, they they tend to not read from the beginning until the end okay because when they see too much text okay they will just start to um look at other part of this um look somewhere else okay so to buy it okay so how you can apply this movie static design okay you can slowly introduce one point at a time okay maybe point one dulu keluar okay when you finish with point one and then point two okay ataupun perhaps Two points can appear at the same time, okay, and then three and four can appear after that, okay. That is also considered as movement, okay. Not necessarily it has to move um, right, uh, right or left or up and down, okay. Movement can also be in order that they appear. The last would be symmetry is the ultimate evil, okay. Symmetry means, um, let's say when you're doing a video, okay, so you're doing this again, you're doing PowerPoint on your video, okay, make sure that you are not center okay because if you're always center then it's slightly uh slightly um i would say i mean boring as well as symmetry and okay that's why when you look into a powerpoint and you look at i think webex code okay webex um, i can't remember is it webex or zoom okay the speaker is always going to be on either side Kiranya dekat atas kanan ataupun atas kiri ataupun bawah ni lah. Okay. So the speaker will never be in the middle. Okay. Because again, if it's in the middle, if if everything is too symmetry, okay, then um, that is there's basically no movement. Okay. Sebab kalau let's say if, if let's say if I'm talking here, for example, I'm on the far, I think this is, should be the left side and left, far left. And then my slide appear over here. Okay, then it will create dynamic. Okay, the dynamic because um, the eyes can look the pin matter. Okay, they boleh tengok kepada uh, kedua dua belah, so kanan dan kiri. They boleh tengok center. Okay, because in design we have this rule of third. Rule of third maksudnya kita bahagikanlah kita bahagikan skrin itu kepada tiga. Like this one kan? So kita satu, dua, tiga, and bagi macam tu. Satu, dua, tiga like that. Okay, okay. so all your text or all your subject has to be in the intersection, the persilangan di kita punya bagian tu, because uh, apparently it is the most interesting point, or the, or the most interesting spot, okay, for visual perspective, okay. Now, so that is symmetry. Okay, uh, I'm going to go very fast. Uh, uh, whichever part that I think I've I've covered um, quite extensively. So concepts are covered dengan banyak. So this is for every one of you. Okay, what do you think this picture is trying to sell? Okay, so I give everyone perhaps two minutes. Go, go, two minutes, one minute. Okay, in two minutes, what do you think is happening? Okay, this is slightly a bit KBKK punya, ni lah KBKK punya soalan sikit. Okay, so try to think, okay. Some of the hint are already presented in the in the pictures. Dia punya hint dah nampak lah sebenarnya. And then going to be text. 
Okay, so if your answer is uh, shellac, then you are right. Dia punya produk yang dia ingin jual di sini adalah shellac. Okay, dekat sini ada nampak sebenarnya. Dia protect wood. Okay. Uh, dia punya konsep kat sini adalah dia, dia nak tunjuk kenapa dia pakai taekwondo. Okay. Sebab kita tahu orang taekwondo dia selalu patahkan kayu kan. Dalam pertandingan dia patahkan kayu. Okay. So inilah kesan kepada pemain taekwondo ini. Kalau kayu itu disapukan dengan shellac. Okay. So dia punya tangan, dia punya kepala akan lebam sebab kayu tu dah terlampau kuat dan dilindungi oleh shellac. Okay. So um, this this one, I mean the reason why I show this is it can be part of your video concept. Okay. Meaning that in your video, okay, you can stop for a few minutes or few seconds. You don't have to talk from the, the first second to the last second. Okay. So you can actually pause okay, in the middle. Okay, and you give them some activity. Okay, just to think. Okay, so this activity. Okay, so they can either pause the video or to post the picture. Okay, or you can bring over this activity. Let's say the video ends here. Okay, and the the answer can be discussed in the synchronous session online lah. Can you face to face synchronous session? That can also be a concept, meaning that your, I mean, every time your video ends, okay, so your video will post question to the students and they have to prepare with the question. Means that they tak tidur lah. Dia kena tengok video, kita sampai habis, okay, sebab dia, dia dipaksa untuk menjawab soalan di mana soalan itu akan ditanya semasa kelas berikutnya. Okay. So, I mean, I would say this is a kind of like a, a good, um, one would be a good way to attract your, um, your students it can be to to force them kita paksa ting di tengok an okay it, it can also be some way for you to give time for the student to rest okay bagi masa untuk dia berehat okay and at the same time we want to apply what they have learned in that learning unit in the video lah okay so they apply okay? lepas to the next class perhaps a synchronous class that we can discuss about the answer okay okay so use FS families only. So ini untuk kita punya text. Let's say if you again, if you're using PowerPoint, okay, make sure not to use too many fonts. Okay, so choose type typeface for specific purpose. Okay, the safest one, of course, we have Arial, we have Century Gothic, and then um, the reason why I I don't mention Times New Roman because Times New Roman is too um, mundane. Dia dah tahu biasa. This usually Times New Roman ni untuk dokumen dokumen kita print surat ke whatsoever kan. So untuk dekat slide, okay, takut nanti bila student tengok time New Roman, secara psikologi mereka akan fikir ini satu, satu lagi dokumen yang mereka kena baca. Okay, so choose text that is uh, slightly fun. Okay, macam ni lah for example, this one I think I'm using Century Gothic. Okay, this is a sans, sans serif punya, uh, sans serif punya text because dia tak ada echo. Okay, the serif like times in Roman, dia ada echo lah. Echo maksudnya the, the, sometimes the A is slightly more camp. Maksudnya dia over sikit. Okay. I will show you later a different type of text. So in doing that, you need to define what the purposes of using the text are. Okay. So if you want, a very, if your concept is very simple, okay, then I would suggest this very simple text like Arial, okay, or Calibri. It's sangat simple. Okay, a single type family with a variety of weight and italics should be enough all by itself. Okay, this is a very good tip. Let's say if you want to differentiate your point, okay, now to fikir cara untuk differentiate adalah untuk menggunakan text beza. Tak semestinya. Okay, so one way adalah awak boleh menggunakan tambah dia punya berat macam ni. Kita boleh boldkan dia, kita boleh boldkan dia dan juga kita boleh besarkan dia size. Okay, next kita boleh tukar warna tanpa menukar dia pun tanpa menukar dia punya family font okay so this is a good example lah so too many type faces are dis, are distracting and self conscious and might confuse the oh, might confuse or tire the viewer okay so dia terlampau banyak uh, font jadi mata dia tapi dia punya psikologi dia akan cuba untuk membaca pelbagai font so lama-lama dia akan penat okay this uh, something um, that is good example lah. So they are only using one font. Okay. So untuk logo tak kira. Okay. So logo we will not include as part of the type font used in your design. Okay. Like this one. Again. 
every single text here, they are using the same font. Macam ni. So this is the side effect of using too many font. And nak baca sekaligus pun salah. I mean, nak, nak baca sekaligus pun susah. So using too many fonts is bad, really bad. Okay, so I think most of us, we usually keep to using <coughs> one font only. Okay. This is another good example, okay, of what it may look like. Okay, if you're using too many colors, warna pun sama juga, warna untuk font, kalau, <coughs> kalau boleh jangan terlampau banyak sangat. Tiga cukup, dua atau tiga. Okay, tapi untuk font, uh, I would strongly, uh, I would strongly suggest limit yourself to using two font only. Okay, in your slideshow. Okay, rule number five, pick color purpose. I think this one I can skip. Okay, so use what, um, what color that best suits your learning unit. Usually, if you are from engineering, selalunya warna biru lah, kan? Uh, and then if you're like neutral punya um, faculty, uh, macam FEB, FSS, usually black. I, I would say the, the surface is black, grey. Okay, and then you can change the shade of that colour. Okay, daripada tukar warna dia, let's say, hitam pergi kepada merah. Okay, you can change the black into slightly darker, uh, sorry, the black into slightly darker or, or make it more lighter. Okay, so to make it um, resembling a grey color okay and if let's say you are using green let's say your topic is on fauna so that green you can change the set the shade kita tukar shade warna hijau tu daripada warna hijau tua kepada warna hijau muda okay so negative space is magical okay all right so space calls attention to content okay so separate it from unrelated content around it and gives the eyes resting place ini sangat penting untuk uh, pensyarah yang menggunakan slide okay. uh, Make sure slide itu adalah sangat simple okay. So it's it's best kalau ada I mean I think even Bila kita ambil PGD for example eh, Masa PGD Sentiasa digalakkan menggunakan my map eh, Daripada kita menggunakan semasa kita, nak, semasa kita bincang Sentiasa akan menggunakan my map So I would say my map is One example for us to be able to Make it simple And then my map also it's very obvious in terms of its negative space. Okay. All right, so space uh, again uh, separates it from unrelated content around it and gives the eyes the resting place. Okay, maksudnya uh, the main point in the slide, okay, will be separated from the things that are not important. Okay, that's why it's better for it to be simple so that it can be filled with negative space. Kalau the simple, the mata pelajarkan terus kepada point itu saja. Dia tak perlu baca the whole line. Okay. Lagi-lagi kalau kalau slide itu dipenuh dengan line, itu lagi bahaya. Okay. So, better dia semudah dan sesimple mungkin. Okay. So, a lack of negative space overwhelms and confuses confuses the audience. Okay. So, this is an example of um, effect of negative space. Okay. Di mana Perletakkan negative space, okay, akan menyebabkan kita berfikir dengan cara yang berbeza. Okay, for example, on this left side, okay, so we might see this as a, a, a base, okay, satu pasu saja, okay. But when we revert the negative space, kita terpalitkan negative space, I mean sekarang ni usually, <coughs> usually negative space adalah berwarna putih, most of the time lah, okay. It's basically the most dominant space in this in this case white is the most dominant okay so our eyes automatically we don't focus on the white part okay so we're going to look on the color part over here so we will see the vase okay but if we invert the negative space di mana sekarang warna putih tengah-tengah ini okay so kita akan fokus kepada warna hitam so kita akan nampak image yang lain pula okay so this is something that we can actually exploit in our slide in our video Okay, especially lah. Okay, so we can uh, exploit negative space so that the student can focus on what they should focus on. Okay, ni contoh lagi negative space. Let's keep this one. Alright, um, logo ni pun um, banyak uh, logo yang yang agak um, bijak. Bagi saya lah dia menggunakan negative space dengan sangat bagus. Okay, for example, this is Bank of America, kan? Okay, ini logo dia. Okay, so logo Bank of America, okay, we know that uh, binatang 
rasmi ataupun haiwan rasmi Amerika adalah bald eagle yang saya um, kelang botak tu. Okay, so in this in this logo, we can actually see the eagle. Nampak ni tak? In the middle. So this is the head of the eagle. Ini kepala helang. Ini ekor dia. So ini sayap. Okay. So again, because of the when put ini, okay, because of the negative space, okay, the company can actually exploit the negative space into making some very brilliant logo. Okay. Sama juga macam FedEx. Um, FedEx ini kita tengok uh, dekat sini lah on this um, PX ni dia ada anak panah ke kanan ok so bila kita play video usually bila kita play video and bila kita tekan yang forward kan forward is basically anak panah ke kanan all, all, all time maksudnya mereka akan cepat dia akan fast forward so this basically um, show the identity of FedEx ok they will always be fast forward ok in delivering their parcels Okay, so again, uh, very interesting use of uh, negative space over here. Sekarang ni, negative space adalah warna hitam. It's no longer white. This is the negative space. So then our eyes will focus on this middle part over here. The active space. Okay, same goes with this other poster as well. Yang negative space adalah warna biru. This color over here. So our eyes uh, will ignore this blue color. Then we will focus 100% to this middle picture over here. Okay, so that is um, next space. Okay, so untuk move it. Okay, for slides show, um, again, the animation would help, but don't apply too much. I think every slide, if you make it like fade, will be enough. Okay, jangan dia tukar, dia terus sharp tukar. Okay, like this. Uh, this I would say my slide now, it is sharp, uh, sharp transition between two pages. Okay, so if you want to uh, introduce movement, you can make it. Um, the animation is fed in, fed out. Okay. Okay. So movement is basically some something that you want your students um, to look at and to sort of like introduce movement, introduce movement uh, from your slide to your students. Okay. Macam pasal bergambar ini, kita tahu pelakon ini. Okay. The the actor they are moving forward ke depan. They're moving from from behind towards us. Okay, same as this uh, picture over here. Okay, we know that he is moving from this corner, uh, lower lower left into this upper right. Okay, so we see movement. Okay, so this one you can actually use pictures in your slide. Okay, and your pictures, kalau boleh, okay, uh, make sure your pictures shows movement. Okay, pasti kalau pegang gambar ada menunjukkan pergerakan. Okay. Let's say, uh, macam maybe kursus, kursus automobil. Okay, so kita nak tunjuk kereta. Okay, so kalau boleh tunjuk kereta yang tengah bergerak di atas jalan raya. Okay, if you want to show movement. Okay, so don't choose a car that is parked in the parking lot. Okay, jangan tunjuk gambar kereta yang sedang park. Because kalau, kalau kita tengok kereta itu dah park, Kita tahu tak ada movement. So our brain automatically we do not register movement. But if we if we show pictures with a moving car, then kita punya otak akan register. Okay, dia bergerak daripada kiri ke kanan. Then at least the your students brain they will start uh, at least they will start thinking. They dapat imagine. Okay, kereta ni bergerak daripada kanan ke kiri. Adalah proses berlaku sedikit sebanyak dalam dalam otak pelajar kita. Okay. And asymmetry is the ultimate level. So kalau boleh jangan uh, the video, kalau boleh jangan terlampau symmetry. Okay, so something like this, this is asymmetry. Okay, because everything is not centered. Okay, so this, um, the chimney over here is mostly to the left side, while this wood over here is mostly to the right. Okay, so this is a, com uh, a complete uh, example of asymmetry. Ketidakseimbangan lah. Okay, I don't have an example of symmetry because, yeah, I mean, it's not interesting to look at. So every single one of this photo, okay, if we divide it into two, kita potong setengah kan. Setiap satu ini, dia akan nampak berbeza. Okay, so that's why it is asymmetry. Okay, like this one. Nah, okay. Alright, so, okay, this an example. What, I mean, apart from this nine rules tadi, okay, so I mean, nine tolak uh, tiga, tiga, so enam. So, so six rules that you can apply in your video, okay. So we can also look at other component that we can add into the video. Okay. 
for example this one tadi okay so you can actually add sound and you can add visual effects of course sound i would say i mean i have to use it because it's free on powerpoint okay but don't use that sound bila kita bila anda buat video nanti jangan pakai bunyi yang macam ni okay, kalau boleh pakai bunyi yang um, yang sesuai dengan point yang akan ditunjukkan okay for example um, Um, again, if, if I'm taking into engineering punya course, okay, and then that topic will be on momentum. Okay, momentum dia ada dia punya formula. Okay, and then bila formula tu keluar, bunyi dia bunyi shush, tu, something lebih cepat lah. And then dia punya visual effects, dia keluar dengan cepat, tapi dia muncul dengan cepat. Okay, then it suits that uh, text tadi. Okay, so kalau boleh, kalau kita nak introduce sound, effect ni, this is because of sound effect. If you want to use sound effect, make sure it fits the text ataupun the points that, they, that we are using. Okay, my example here is not that good. I'm just trying to show that what we can what we can use okay to make our video more interesting or more captivating. Okay, so the dialogue, uh, make sure uh, we are talking clearly. Okay, pastikan bila kita cakap kita punya um, suara itu dapat didengar oleh pelajar. Okay, uh, that's why bahaya kalau kita duduk sebelah kipas ataupun duduk sebelah ikon. Okay, kerana ikon tu dia akan lagi kuat daripada kita punya suara. So bahaya. Okay, so make sure kalau let's say um, tak ada uh, apa namanya, tak ada alternatif lain. So kita kena juga shoot dalam bilik anda ikon. Dia punya air. So tu bunyi dia sangat kuat. Then mungkin kita kena consider pakai uh, apa nama ni, pakai mikrofon. Okay, kalau ada lah. I mean, This is in case, I mean, I'm not saying that we all need to have a microphone. Okay, cuma kalau, let's say, kalau tak ada, tak ada, uh, tak ada tanpa lain, let's say we kita nak tunjuk bengkel. Okay, nak tunjuk mesin. Okay, tapi bila masuk je mesin, bunyi sangat kuat. Okay, then memang, I mean, and then tak boleh keluar daripada kilang, I mean, tak boleh keluar daripada bengkel sebab semua mesin ada dalam bengkel. And the bengkel tu pula bising. Dan kita pula nak explain kegunaan, kegunaan mesin tadi. Okay, so the best solution would be, kita kena ada microphone. Okay, other than that, then I would say use voiceover. Okay, tapi tak dapat lah. I mean, kita tak dapat explain dengan live. We have to explain using voiceover. Okay, and then we can also use music. Okay, but make sure that the music is not going to un, um, overwhelm our dialogue. Okay, pastikan music itu tidak akan menenggelamkan kita punya suara. Okay, saya perasan uh, actually music pun sangat bantu. Okay, bila saya tengok video, okay, ada beberapa video sangat menarik sebab dia pakai sound effect dan juga dia pakai music. Okay, music tak tahu lah music yang ada lirik. Okay, just this instrumental music. Okay, sometimes it's classical, can be jazz. Okay, but make sure that the song fit the topic ataupun the learning unit. Okay, so untuk um, bunyi ke music yang kita nak download, I mean, Uh, there are some website that offer free, royalty free um, sound. Okay, we have Zaplat. Okay, and then we have free sound effects and then also free sound. Ini semua nama, nama website. Okay, so once ini, they offer free royalty document ataupun sound. Okay, so you can actually go into their website and download. Okay, next will be images. Okay, so jangan, jangan kedekut untuk tak nak share gambar. Okay, let's say kalau kita punya point boleh ditunjukkan dengan gambar. So, apa salahnya untuk kita tunjukkan dengan gambar. Okay, because again, with the survey that I share with my student, okay, a lot of them they actually prefer visual aid. Okay, so ini I think semua fakulti pun sama juga. Kalau boleh, kalau kita punya point itu boleh ditunjukkan dengan gambar, better ditunjukkan dengan gambar. Okay, uh, prefer, untuk gambar, jarang ada masalah royalty. Okay, music, yes. Okay, by the way, music bahaya. Let's say kalau kita pakai music yang baru berumur kurang daripada 30 tahun. Okay, because harta intellect, okay, uh, intellectual property ataupun trademark untuk produk media. Let's say clip video ke film, music, dia punya umur, dia punya IP itu adalah 30 tahun. Okay, itu kalau kalau dia punya original owner tak renew. Kalau dia renew, bertambah lagi. Okay, tapi untuk jangka masa biasa adalah 30 tahun. Okay, so selepas 30 tahun muzik itu di, di, uh, diterbitkan, okay, ia menjadi hak milik semua orang awam. Okay, it belongs to the public. 
Okay, again, unless if someone renews the um, the trademark. Okay, uh, bahaya kalau kita guna, especially kalau kita nak upload video dalam YouTube ataupun Facebook. Okay, if you're using this new song that's still young, umur dia masih lagi 30 tahun ke bawah. Okay, uh, zaman sekarang tak lama. Uh, even masa upload pun dia dah reject. Dia akan, I mean, this YouTube akan cakap, your video contain um, copyrighted music ataupun copyrighted material. Dia tak dapat nak, tak dapat nak um, proceed. Okay. Dia bahaya kalau lama-lama. Let's say kalau lagu itu tak popular tapi dia ada copyright. Okay. Then it will take YouTube ataupun Facebook maybe a couple of weeks to register that this song is actually copyrighted. Okay. And then they will mute your video. Okay. Dia akan bagi hilang semua suara okay, ataupun dia terus um, ban punya, uh, kita punya video. So, itu bahaya. Okay, so, make sure download ataupun gunakan muzik yang yang tak popular sekarang. Okay, so, macam lagu Lady Gaga ke Billie Eilish ke semua tu memang tak boleh pakai. Unless kita nak bayar dia lah. Okay, tapi kalau muzik-muzik daripada Hollywood memang sangat mahal. Okay, even dekat Malaysia pun sama juga. Okay, pun ada juga. So, Muzik-muzik daripada artis terbaru memang tak boleh pakai macam um, Kairu Saini ke um, Sita Liza, okay. Semua muzik mereka ini actually dah di copyright, tak boleh pakai untuk tujuan personal lah. Walaupun untuk education, okay. Unless again, dia banyak, dia banyak uh, pengecualian. Unless kalau kita bagi email, okay, bagi dekat company Sita Liza, minta dia punya um, apa nama, minta dia punya Um, kebenaran. Okay, then dia akan bagi. Itu pun kalau pihak mereka nak. Sebab pihak mereka kena buat kerja lagi. Dia kena inform dengan YouTube lagi untuk benarkan video awak terus untuk di-upload. Okay, usually uh, most of the time they would not uh, these big names, they would not entertain us. Okay, unless if it's uh, freelance ataupun indie punya artis. Okay, because they're not that busy. Okay, when you when you want to ask to use, when you're asking to use the music usually they will allow it. Okay, but most of the time, paling-paling pun dia minta kita kredit nama dia. Di penghujung itu, uh, muzik itu adalah um, muzik itu adalah milik artis itu sendiri. Okay. Untuk image, kan, uh, most of the time dia tak ada masalah. Okay. And the image is easy for us to cheat a bit. So, kita tukar warna, dia dah tak ada, tak register dalam internet. Okay. Even when you swap it, kiranya you flip dia punya gambar, dia peritahkan di tangan kiri, itu pun sudah akan tak dapat diretik oleh online punya uh, tracker. Okay. So, untuk free image, okay, kita ada Unsplash, Pexels, and also Pixabay. Ini semua free. Eh? Okay. Of course, you can actually, kalau I mean, kalau kita nak lagi banyak, kita kena bayar lah. Okay. Tapi dia ada beberapa seleksi gambar yang percuma. Tapi malangnya untuk ketiga-tiga website ini, dia dia ni sikit, dia western centric sikit. Maksudnya, banyak gambar dia refer kepada budaya barat. Okay. Ada ada yang Asia tapi tak banyak. So kebanyakan dia pada uh, budaya-budaya barat. Okay. And then video pun ada juga. So we can actually go to uh, video yang ada CC. CC means creative common. Okay. So any video yang dicakap royalty free ataupun CC, it is free to use. Okay. Paling-paling pun diminta kita untuk credit nama mereka di penghujung kita punya video. Okay. Same goes to the visual effects. Okay. I think But this effect usually for text, okay, and um, usually for advanced punya editor lah. Okay, but if some of you you're interested in exploring this um, visual effects for your text, okay, so you can consider. You can go to YouTube. You can just type visual effects and it will be free. Okay, dia akan tunjuk sample video. Dekat bawah dia punya uh, uh, about video dia akan tunjukkan di ma macam mana awak nak download. Okay, dia punya uh, template at least. Okay. okay, ini contoh dia. So, this is animated text. Okay, text yang ada visual effects. Okay. Um, you can add video over here. You can also um, add pictures. Okay. So, to make to make your video more interesting. Okay. I have an example. Like very quickly, I'm going to show everyone. Okay. Um, an example of video. Saya akan tunjuk dengan cepat saja. Takut nanti terlebih masa.
Okay, so video ni uh, berkenaan dengan uh, history uh, sejarah editing. Okay, so we look at uh, how this editor or this director okay uh, make the video more interesting. Hi, John Hess, podcast industries and television. Hi, John Hess from FilmmakerIQ.com. And today we'll look at the birth of film editing, the origins of cinematic language and the beginning of continuity editing. It's hard for modern audiences who grew up with video to imagine the spectacle of the first film screening in the basement of the Grand Cafe in Paris in 1895 by the Lumiere brothers. Now this film, workers leaving the Lumiere factory, as unextraordinary as it looks today, marveled audiences as something completely unseen before. In the years of film's infancy, the dancing shadows and the machines behind them were the main attraction. The content of the film was not so important. They were essentially animated photographs. But one audience member in the Grand Café screen saw much more potential. A professional magician by the name of Georges Meillet. Okay, so inilah antara contoh video yang bagi saya lah dia agak menarik, dia simple okay, tapi dia uh, sangat bersifat dynamic dari segi pergerakan uh, dia punya host di sini. Okay, so kita nampak tadi dia bergerak daripada kanan, kiri and then daripada kecil, besar, like this. Imagine the spectacle film screening in the basement. Okay, dan juga menggunakan banyak gambar. Okay, so this is stock footage. Okay, this one, usually untuk gambar-gambar lah macam ini, ini cuma. Okay, and then the, dia punya teks pun sentiasa bergerak dan teks dia menggunakan satu font sahaja, satu warna sahaja. Okay, dan untuk dia punya host, again, kita nampak dia bergerak tangan, you know, muka dia, dia punya expression, okay. Uh, maybe tak semua kita bukannya pelakon ataupun mungkin semua, uh, tak, tak semua dari kita, tak semua dari kita ini bukannya orang yang pernah ekspresi tapi at least kalau boleh gerakkan sedikit. Okey tangan ke kepala, okey. Kalau tak apa kita gerakkan seperti mana host ini bergerak. Okey kanan kiri besar kecil. Okey. So benda ini dia akan dia akan membantu video kita untuk bersifat lebih dinamik di mana pelajar dia akan tengok kiri kanan atau bawah. Okey so that's why uh, it is actually quite important okey for us not to stay static in our video. Okey. All right, um, I'm going to show again, I think for the last part, uh, will be some, some software, okay, that you can consider. Yang ini, again, this is, this will be the free softwares. Okay, let's get this. Um, okay, so this example, as I can tell I mean, we have no time to, um, to detect. Okay, so what is strong here would be there's no lighting. Okay, one, and then avoid standing in front of your uh, window. Okay, elakkan untuk berdiri di hadapan tingkap. Okay, dia boleh di opposite. Sebab tingkap ini kalau cai kalau kita membelakangi tingkap, okay, kita punya muka kena bergelap. Okay, especially kalau kita tak pakai lighting. Okay, and then uh, dengan pakai V neck. Okay, lepas tu baju ketat, lepas tu nampak ada kipas kat sini. Okay, dengan uh, teks pula pakai pelbagai warna. Okay, yang paling bahaya yang saya yang saya agak kerap nampak <coughs> dalam slide show uh, yang online video, uh, kadang macam ni, this is actually introduction to cinema. So, perkataan cinema dia actually wanita juga. So, dia tenggelam kepada warna dalam video. So, really have to make sure dia takkan tenggelam. So, antara cara untuk mengelakkan teks ni daripada tenggelam, kita boleh introduce drop shadow. Okay, so drop shadow ini ada dalam uh, dalam PowerPoint di bahagian sini, this one. This is drop shadow. Okay, so for example, my text now, it is it is not really um, solid. So we can add the weight, tambah dia punya berat. Okay, makin besar kan. Okay, so better than this kan. Okay, and then kita boleh tambah pula shadow kat sini. Okay, so dia akan nampak lagi. Dia, make, dia macam jadi 3D. Okay, so for example, yeah, I cannot fit something. So, antara, antara contoh kita boleh buat adalah kita bertukar warna di kepadaan putih di sepertan cinema okay, dan juga drop shadow. Okay. Alright, so very quickly juga untuk uh, equipment. Okay, so I have, I think I will do this next time on the on the practical part of uh, setting up the demonstration. Okay, tapi yang penting adalah untuk lighting tadi. Okay, so if you are 
planning to shoot the video, okay, uh, and then you want to show your face, make sure your lighting is um, sufficient. Dia cukup. Okay. All right. So, untuk uh, tools and multimedia, okay, so some things that I can share with everyone here, okay, would be um, how to use your existing software. Okay, macam Microsoft PowerPoint, how to make it more interesting. So what I what I always do is, okay, for example, this one, this is not, not my original um, design, okay. So for this, to get this design, okay, I think some of you might know, okay, you can just go to design ideas over here, tekan. Okay, so dia akan bagi seleksi di sini. Okay, so at least, okay, so your um, your design, okay, for example, I, I'm going to pick this one. Okay, so sometimes they provide you with uh, built-in pictures. Okay, you, you just type equipment. Okay, they akan keluar gambar yang berkaitan dengan equipment. So, I can just press this. Okay, so it will give this high quality punya gambar. It can also be like this. Okay, so the way it works is it will identify the words that you are providing them. Okay, so for example, in my case, I'm putting equipment as the first word. So, PowerPoint, it will search all these pictures Okay, with equipment tag to this picture. Okay, so you can pakai lah. So, lepas tu kita boleh uh, cari pelbagai lagi design. This one and this one. So, up to us. Macam mana kita nak pilih. Okay, so daripada dia uh, macam ni lah. Okay, so this is quite blunt kat sini. Okay, so you can use um, PowerPoint okay, to make it more interesting. Okay, so untuk um, voiceover, okay, um, our our laptop actually has our own built-in uh, voice recorder. So, you can just type here. You can just put video recorder. Sorry. Voice. Voice recorder. Okay. So, this voice recorder, okay, for most laptops, it is actually very high quality. Okay. Some of it is actually uh, better than our phone. Sebab apa? Sebab dalam laptop ini, um, this built-in software, it records your voice uh, using this WAV punya format, WAV. So WAV format is the one of the most high quality um, audio format. Okay. Sometimes if you're using other voice recorder, they will they will automatically uh, convert it to MP3. So M3, MP3 is one of the, I would say, the lower end side of the quality. Okay, so you can use this free one lah. Let's say if you want to record your voice over. Okay, awak tak nak show muka, tak apa, it's okay. Tapi awak, uh, kita nak tunjuk, kita nak bagi voice over. Okay, you, you can just use your laptop. Okay. Alright, so for video editor. Okay, so I have three over here. Um, that um, ev everyone can use. Okay, edit, they are free. Although some premium, um, some premium function you have to pay. Uh, but to be honest, the the basic one, the free one, is actually enough, okay, for everyone to use as of now. So we have this window video editor. Yang ini built in lah dalam kebanyakan window punya laptop. Okay, so tak perlu beli. Memang dah, dah sedia di install. Okay, tapi dia sangat simple. Okay, so for like really, really beginner, you can try with video editor. Okay, sebab dia sangat simple, tak berat pun, okay. Cuma function dia mungkin tak banyak, okay, tapi untuk starter, sudah memadai. Okay. Shortcut, I would say this is for um, average user. Okay. While DaVinci Resolve, it is for more advanced. Let's say if you want to fix the color of your video, it's better to use DaVinci Resolve. Because DaVinci Resolve is mostly used for uh, post-production and then also to fix some of the video. Shortcut is good for any normal editing. Well, Da Vinci is for you to fix. Awak nak warna dia lagi dominant, awak nak uh, kiranya kita nak tambah um, visual effects pun Da Vinci Resolve. Okay. So, this would be the interface. This is window video editor over here. Okay. Very simple. Okay. Uh, dia punya timeline actually bawah, ada lagi semua timeline dia. Okay. But you can see here. Okay. But these are just the function over here. Very simple. Tak pening. So, untuk shortcut. Okay. So, this will be the timeline. So, uh, it has more function over here, if you can see. You can add more um, more effects as well. Okay, but how many effects? Okay, so untuk DaVinci pula, actually, even you see at the uh, the punya interface up here, there is more 
uh, windows over here. The band selection, even over here. So DaVinci Resolve has more function, especially for you to really fix and enhance your video. If you're really serious about video producing, okay, you can consider learning about DaVinci. Di hampir sama dengan Adobe Premiere dan juga Final Cut Pro. Okay, so all this uh, pro pro punya software lah. Okay, but for beginner, I would suggest this window video editor saja. Okay, so untuk telefon, okay, perhaps some of you uh, don't like to use laptop, you can use your phone. So we have in short, we have uh, V L L O V O or V L O. I'm not sure how how they pronounce it. Ataupun boleh pakai Adobe Rush. Again, all of these are free. Unfortunately, I mean. Um, I think uh, untuk Adobe Rush, dia ada premium function. Okay, but since we are Unimas lecturer, we are actually entitled to all Adobe punya software. Okay, so you can ask your technician. Okay, uh, you can ask for you to be registered because uh, most of the lecturer in uh, in FACA, we are all registered untuk Adobe. So, daripada Adobe Acrobat, sampailah the whole master suite punya Adobe tu, kami boleh pakai. Okay, so all actually all staff in Unimas are entitled to all of this software. Okay, but even the basic one is enough. For in short and below, uh, for you to remove the watermark, okay, you have to watch their as usual. You have to watch their um, advertisement. Okay, after you watch the advertisement, then you can remove the watermark. <clears throat> okay, so this in short, the punya interface in the top below. Okay, then you enter Adobe Rush. Of course, um, if you ask me which one is better, I would say Adobe Rush because it is very similar to Adobe Premiere Pro. Okay, but the simpler one, if you really don't want to, uh, you're not into discovering too much of the function, so you can consider in short ataupun below. Okay, so editor online. Okay, so this is web-based editor. We have Headliner and we have Adobe Spark. Okay. Um, I don't really recommend using online editor because you have to upload your uh, you have to upload your footage. Okay, so your footage is basically will be kept in their storage. That's one risk. That is one risk, and then another one would be is going to slow down. Okay, meaning that you have to you need to have very good internet connection. Okay, and then um, your progress is determined by how fast your internet connections are. Okay, tapi the plus side would be you don't have to use pen drive or hard drive. Okay, because semua akan disimpan dalam online cloud. Okay, tapi semua ni pun boleh disimpan dalam OneDrive, senang saja. Okay, so Adobe again, um, it's free, uh, it's, it should be free for all um, staff in Unimas. Okay, because I think we bought the whole package untuk semua staff. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, that's all from me. Any question? regarding how to produce captivating video. The participant, is there any questions uh, regarding yeah, producing uh, videos for ODL? I open to the floor. Any questions in order to ask uh, Mr. Alif? Assalamualaikum. Assalamualaikum. Thank you, Dr. Alif. Saya rasa macam daripada... Negative oh, itu Shafina. dah bergerak sikit lah. You've given oh, me yeah? some hope, the push factor. Ah, okay, sekarang okay. ni kita berada for ODL CPA. Dia bukan nak tak nak eh. Dia benda ni memang kita kena buat. Hmm, It's not a matter of choice. Sebelum ni kita suruh pelajar je buat. Saya dah biasa hmm. tengok kerja pelajar. So thank you very much. Uh, terus terang I have to start buat dululah. Mungkin lepas tu mungkin saya akan ada soalan. Sekarang ni hari ni dia okey sahaja. Uh, honestly I've never made betul. any videos. So insyaallah uh, we have the team planning, here. Planning set dulu lah. Ah, uh, kita buat dulu. Ah, uh, then hopefully when when my team and I have something, mungkin kita minta tolong kam uh, buat. Okay, you know, saja. second round ke series kedua ke macam tu lah lebih kurang. Boleh ya? Eh? Boleh. boleh. Dr. Shafina, no problem. Okay, so thank that you, is what kita. Assalamualaikum. Assalam. That is why uh, Dr. Shafina. Kita minta apa? Kita minta Inci Alif uh, buat apa ni? Um, Uh, bagi input on basic dulu. Sebabnya nanti kalau untuk yang demonstration for tools and so on nanti kita boleh kita boleh buat another siri lah supaya dapat hmm. fokus. Saya rasa ada soalan dalam. Ah, Itu ada Dr. Rosa dia tanya. Ah, Dr. Rosa tanya, music perlu ada copyright. Bagaimana dengan gambar atau video YouTube? 
Okay, alright. I think uh, okay. So untuk video ataupun YouTube, that's why better kalau kita pergi YouTube, cuba type royalty free video. Okay, nanti kita akan dibawa pergi kepada senarai beberapa video yang royalty free. So video pun actually sangat bahaya. Okay, so that's why kalau let's say kalau ada kalau ada movie baru keluar, let's say sekarang ni movie baru um, macam Marvel lah, for example Marvel yang let's say Wonder Vision. Okay, kalau kita type dekat YouTube Wonder Vision dia akan keluar. Okay, tapi video tu dia either kecil ataupun dia dah kena stretch sebab dia nak bypass yang scan online. Okay, so that's why walaupun kita letak sikit saja, maybe dalam beberapa, dia be beberapa saat okay. Kalau nak pakai yang for example yang copyright punya video. Like for example, 5 seconds should be fine. Tapi kalau lebih daripada seminit, itu dia ada risiko untuk di taken down oleh uh, YouTube punya community atau Facebook. Okay, so that's why the best option would be just pergi YouTube, just type in royalty free. Okay, ataupun boleh pergi Google, uh, letak yang CC lah, creative common video ataupun images. Okay. Gambar senang sikit nak tipu. So gambar kita bertukar, I mean dia, dia actually bahaya jugalah. Gambar, let's say kita nak pakai, kita tukar dia punya brightness ataupun tukar hue dia. Tukar sikit je actually hue dia, maksudnya daripada one, let's say mata dia warna, mata dalam gambar itu, mata orang tu adalah warna biru. Tukar hue dia, dia warna uh, warna brown dan lari. Maksudnya dah, dah selamat. Okay, so yang online tracker dia tak boleh track sebab dia dah lain daripada dia punya ni, dia punya uh, wavelength. Okay, dia ada algorithm sekarang ni online. Even music pun, dia ada waveform dia. Okay, so that's why dia akan dia akan trace apa-apa music ataupun video yang dia upload ke YouTube. Semua ini akan trace kepada dia punya wavelength, dia akan trace kepada video yang dah copyright. Okay. Either, uh, either yang royalty free ataupun pakai video yang umur dia dah lebih 30 tahun. Okay. 30 plus. Okay. Lah. Itu yang itu kalau yang uh, video ataupun music background uh -huh. kita nak upload ke YouTube tapi kalau kita tak nak upload ke YouTube macam mana tu? Let's say should be fine. Um, boleh. Should be fine. Boleh boleh. Sebab saya pernah buat saya pernah upload yang uh, surprisingly video film uh, film Piramli Walaupun umur dia 50 plus kan, masih lagi copyrighted. I think anak kot, anak um, anak uh, Piramli yang dia copyright, I put, saya upload ke dalam YouTube because saya ajar kelas ini Imam Malaysia, saya kena tunjuk video Piramli and then tapi dia ambil masa setahun, baru dia kena block. So apa saya buat, saya upload ke dalam OneDrive. Dan OneDrive punya link itu saya paste pergi Elip. Dapat, selamat. For, for, for now lah. <laughs> tak tahu nanti di future mungkin dia dapat, dia dapat trace. Tapi so far okay. Tapi actually tak, tak, tak bagus lah kan. Actually kita dah violate the copyright issues. In a way, yes. Uh, uh, tapi uh, terus saya... Ethically boleh, cuma practically, ethically tak boleh lah. Hmm. Okay, alright. So, um, yang macam video editing tu kan, um, hmm. Mungkin mungkin you all uh, dekat FSGK sana uh, the expert macam kita ni kadang-kadang macam terkiak-kiak juga nak nak video editing tu. Jadi nak, nak pakai ke software? Nak pakai. Macam ha, contohnya. Apa ada yang simple? Um, ada simple. So, saya guna uh, Wondershare eh, Filmora. Lepas tu Filmora. kita. Uh, <laughs> sebab hari tu kan ada subscribe uh, apa tu? Uh, free lifetime. Ah, uh, uh, okay, okay, okay. Tu, uh, for me. It's quite good juga lah. So my children pun boleh guna juga. So I think um, setakat yang basic simple tu memang kita boleh kita boleh buat editing. Tapi bila dah nak masukkan macam tadi kita tengok masuk animation, masuk video. Maksudnya dia ada banyak. Uh, uh. Nak edit satu video tu pun kita kena plan you know what kind of things yang uh, kita nak masuk bila. And then now I can relate with what you say in the script. It's not the script only a script for what we are going to say. It mm. comprises of everything. Dengan, Betul. okay, kita masukkan script ni, video ni bila nak masuk. Tapi bila kita masukkan video tu, dia akan jadi another uh, uh, detailed planning yang dekat video editing tu. Yang ni kita mm. nak masukkan True. image ni, masa kita cakap nak masukkan image ni. Semua kita nak masukkan video. Mungkin yang muda-muda mungkin boleh lah kot. Yang tak berapa mm. muda macam saya ni, mungkin terkia-kia sikit lah. <laughs> Practice makes perfect lah. Dia kena banyak banyak practice sebenarnya. Okay, uh, okay. Thank uh, you. Yeah. 
And the one thing saya lupa nak miss tadi uh, pasal uh, yang durasi. Uh, untuk video, okay, uh, it's better, it's less than 3 minutes. Dia around lah, so below 4 minutes. Dia sebenarnya, kalau kita lebih daripada 4 minit, student dia dah start macam dia marah nak tengok. Okay, so better, the best would be below 3 minutes. So you, you can make it like maybe uh, 2 to 3 minutes, uh, 2 to 4 minutes. Okay, tapi let's say, let's say kalau kita punya lecture panjang, kita boleh pecahkan video itu kepada beberapa bahagian. So let's say topic 1. Dia ada banyak di subtopik. Then that subtopik can be 2 minutes plus. Okay, jangan semua itu nanti, let's say one topic, total dia 10 minutes. Oh, that one, saya sure pelajar dia akan tengok sekali je. Itu pun kalau dia tengok, saya rasa dia dengar juga dia dengar, tanpa dia tengok kita punya slide. Okay, so make sure, make sure one video individually less than, make, make it less than 4 minutes lah. Kurang daripada 4 minit. So, 3 hingga 4 minit. Cabar tu. It's very, yeah, but that is very important because uh, saya pernah saya pernah cuba tunjukkan student. Even film pun saya tunjuk film Piramdi kan. Banyak tidur. Film Piramdi is like nearly two hours. Itu pun mereka tidur. So that's why dia punya dia punya prime time untuk dia focus is getting shorter. That's why untuk film macam dalam YouTube kebanyakan video kalau kita perasan dia memang less daripada four, less daripada four minutes majority because they know that the time spent is so short already. Okay, so kita boleh pecahkan untuk setiap satu topik. Pecahkan hmm. video tersebut kepada minit-minit yang kecil-kecil hmm. lah maksudnya yes, kan? Yes. Uh, Jangan yes. sekaligus. Sebab setakat ni saya buat uh, 15, 15, uh, 15 minit, 15 minit. Sebab even, even pesarah pun, kalau kita share video kita dengan pesarah lain, kalau pesarah lain tengok dia punya durasi itu more than 10 minit, saya yakin pesarah pun tak tengok. Kan? It usually is less, it should be less than 4 minutes. It's the best. Kita tengok pun, yeah. kalau kita share, bila kita tengok dia punya bawah tu, dia punya total tu 3 minutes, kita pun fikir, oh ni cepat. Then kita akan luangkan masa untuk tengok. Daripada dia 10 minutes, kita tak akan tengok pun. Apa, apa ni kelas, kelas. <laughs> oh, kelas apa? Tapi let's say, try. Kalau kita nak buat captivating video, it's better to be less than 4 minutes. Tak nak, um, what do you think? Because captivating video untuk macam mana, kalau untuk yang entertainment, it might be different from yang a bit serious like uh, teaching. So, was it the same concept juga ke macam mana ya? Um, dia punya, I mean, dia punya hakiki ni memang, memang beza lah. Okay, because let's say in my class, uh, macam I show dokumentari film dokumentari. It's one of the, one of the most boring video kan. And the dokumentari can go on for two hours. Of course, kebanyakan pelajar dia tak akan tengok pun kadang-kadang. Okay, dalam kelas pun dia akan tidur. Okay, tapi betul minat, again, it depends on dia punya minat. Kalau dia minat, dia akan sit through walaupun dia berjam, surely. So, let's say if your student, they really like your topic, that if you put 15 minutes, make it akan tengok because they like the topic. So again, I think it depends on um, your own student. Do they like the topic or do they like the course or not? But for me, I would prefer to stick with less than four minutes for your video. Anything else, Dr. Mahani? Anything else? I think kita kena try juga lah, whatever it takes. Yes, definitely lah. <laughs> no choice, no choice. No choice. Cuba je, cuba je, yeah. Practice right. makes perfect. Yalah. Um, but I think kalau if let's say uh, ada participant later on kan in CLF kan, uh, mm -hmm. it might be they need their, your advice kan uh, regarding mm -hmm. our video production ni. Uh, memang boleh kan dapat consultation daripada Encik Alif oh, lah boleh, maksudnya. Boleh. Yes, sure. Simple uh -huh. advice daripada Encik Alif lah. And then at the okay, same time. Cuma kalau, jangan selesai so <laughs> edit je. <laughs> Okay, I think kena belajar lah sebab uh -huh. whether we like it or not, kalau kita buat ODM memang kita hmm. nak kena kita nak kena hasilkan video tersebut. Jadi memang kena, nak tak nak kena belajar lah kan. So I think um, if let's say later on, uh, the participants need uh, to have like a demonstration in term of uh, mm -hmm. using of tools yang Encik Alif lagi tahu tu, saya rasa uh, kita boleh buat another workshop lah supaya oh, ada hands on. Uh, supaya yang tu memang perlu makan masa lagi lah. I mean, that one uh, another session for the for the practical punya bengkel. 
Okay. So saya nak ucap ribuan terima kasih. Uh, thank you very terima much to Encik Ali for the insightful and uh, informative uh, content regarding uh, producing videos for ODL. So um, I really hope that uh, this sharing is valuable to all participants, uh, which I know that uh, going to um, implement ODL soon. So uh, thank you very much, Encik Ali, uh, and thank you very much also to all participants. Ya, yeah, ada dekat sini, dekat chat, uh, Dr. Masuri said, setuju, perlu hands on workshop. Ya, yeah, insyaAllah. Yeah. Nanti kita cuba usahakan untuk hands on workshop. Alright. So, so far, thank you very much. Uh, thank you for the attention. Assalamualaikum and stay safe. Assalamualaikum. Have a nice day, everyone. Thank you very much. Thank you. Assalamualaikum. Terima kasih. Assalamualaikum.